Good morning and welcome to this Thought for the Day for Tuesday, May the 4th. When Christopher asked me to prepare this uh, thought, he very kindly gave me four choices of Bible readings, two from the Old and two from the New Testament. And for me, fortunately, one of them was from the writings of the Apostle Peter, who's one of my great, great heroes from the Bible. He's a hero, I think, because I find him, as perhaps you do, easy to relate to um, in his uh, enthusiasms, but also his, his uh, frequent confusions, the way he'll just get things wrong. Um, but his enthusiasm, uh, such as when he and the disciples are on the lake in the boat, um, in, uh, in rough conditions, uh, Jesus isn't with them, but then they see him walking on the water towards them. It's Peter who immediately steps out of the boat, uh, who walks towards his Lord, but quickly just loses confidence, loses courage and starts sinking and calls to Jesus to rescue him, which of course he does. So the reading I'm taking is from the first chapter of the book of Peter, starting at verse 13 to the end, and I'm reading from the easy-to-read version uh, because the language is so immediate and clear. And this is what it says. So prepare your minds for service. With complete self-control, put all your hope in the grace that will be yours when Jesus Christ comes. In the past, you did not have the understanding you have now. So you did the evil things you wanted to do. But now you are children of God. So you should obey him and not live the way you did before. Be holy in everything you do, just as God is holy. He is the one who chose you. In the scriptures God says, Be holy because I am holy. You pray to God and call him Father. But he will judge everyone the same way by what they do. So while you are visiting here on earth, you should live with respect for God. You know that in the past the way you were living was useless. It was a way of life you learned from those who lived before you. But you were saved from that way of living. You were bought, but not with things that ruin like gold or silver. You were bought with the precious blood of Christ's death. He was a pure and perfect sacrificial lamb. Christ was chosen before the world was made, but he was shown to the world in these last times for you. You believe in God through Christ. God is the one who raised him from death and gave honour to him, so your faith and your hope are in God. You have made yourselves pure by obeying the truth. Now you can have true love for your brothers and sisters. So love each other deeply with all your heart. You have been born again. This new life did not come from something that dies. It came from something that cannot die. You were born again through God's life-giving message that lasts forever. The scriptures say our lives are like the grass of spring and any glory we enjoy is like the beauty of a wild flower. The grass dries up and dies, and the flower falls to the ground. But the word of the Lord lasts forever, and that word is the good news that was told to you. I think for me the key phrases in this passage lie in verses 15 and 16, where uh, Peter says, Be holy in everything you do. And quoting from the scriptures uh, says the words, be holy because I am holy, as God has said. At first sight we think, well, surely that's impossible to achieve. How can we, how can we aspire to holiness? But it's not the only occasion on which in the Bible uh, people are addressed as holy. 
of the Apostle Paul, writing both to the Corinthians and the Colossians in his introductions, calls them holy. So perhaps being holy is not something that uh, only the saints, only those people who have led extraordinary, magnificent lives of, of, of service, of self-sacrifice, perhaps not only they can lead a, a life that can be described as holy. Maybe we in our, in our tiny, fractured, often confused and, and uh, floundering lives can also have achieved some sort of, uh, of holiness. So I think we need to explore what being holy really means. And to do this, there surely can be no better example than looking towards Jesus and his life. His life was one, of course, uh, a perfect life, but one of, of total love and obedience for his father. Uh, his life of love was sacrificial. That greatest sacrifice of all, of course, came as he hung on the cross, giving his life for the salvation of us all, for you, for me, for all who have come to accept Jesus, who will come to accept Jesus in the future in their lives. And here, I think, is the link to understanding what to be holy in everything you do might be. But what we know for sure is that it's not going to be in our own strength or not solely in our own strength. But we have, we have a source of help. We have that from the Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit given to us that, uh, once again, the Apostle Paul explains when he writes to the Galatians in chapter 5, verse 22, and he lists what those fruits of the Spirit are. They are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are all elements that we can understand. They can provide a template for us, for our life, our life every day. And they will help to draw us closer to becoming holy. It's going to start with small steps just by trying to live a life that is closer to the one we know that Jesus longs for us to lead. It's going to involve being more generous to others, both in our thoughts and our time and our actions, and being less concerned for ourselves, for our own priorities and our own needs. So I pray that by becoming aware of the fruits of the Spirit in our own lives, it will give us the encouragement we need and a route to inching closer to being holy. So thank you for being with me and may God bless you.